To support this channel and its efforts to continue providing quality and accessible music education content, please consider donating to the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you. On this special episode of Explained, I sit with the legendary Shirley Jones of the Jones Girls to discuss group harmonic background singing on top of her decorated career as a group singer and solo artist. Can you say it now? I can. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my good, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You good. Know, I'm so thank you so much for accepting this interview. Uh, fi finally, huh? <laughs> finally. I've, I've been a, halfway around the world and back. You're from Detroit, Michigan. Yep, born and raised. Born yeah. And, and you got and you're the daughter of gospel music royalty a legend my mother mary frazier jones was the first black gospel singer to be signed to rca records way back in the day before i was born and uh she ran with the crowd like della reese uh jackie wilson uh, Maddie Moss Clark. In fact, Maddie Moss Clark was her pianist before she uh, went out on her own and started raising her daughters and the, the Clark sisters. Then, of course, you and your sisters are born. Did she discover that you had a voice or did you all discover y'all had a voice and she oh, trained no. it? She did. She discovered it and trained us. She Once it started with she and I, and then Brenda was singing around one day and she said, oh, my goodness. And then the, it was uh, the three of us. And then Valerie started joining in and she said, oh, I might have something here. And because she was also choir director at our home church, Russell Street Baptist Church in Detroit, she um, she knew voices and she taught us uh, how to harmonize, how to pull back when we may have been a little too loud to, in order to get that perfect blend. So like, do you recall what exactly any of those lessons or training, like any exercises she did so you guys knew your notes and what you're supposed to be doing? Uh, mainly the scales, the, the basic scales, but then she also sent us to the Detroit Conservatory Music of music there where we study piano. We all still know piano and that helped too. Shirley mentions that her mother had them sing scales during their training to learn harmony. Scales are the tonal basis of all music. It is a group of ordered notes or pitches in which melodies and harmonies are built around. Scales are so important because they expand the singing range. They improve the tone of your voice. They develop your ear for musicality, but most importantly, they improve your sense of pitch. And you need a strong sense of pitch to sing in harmony. Knowing scales is also important for an instrumentalist. In addition to learning how to sing scales, knowing how to play and recognize different scales on piano would allow the Jones girls to create more exciting and more complex harmonic structures compared to their peers. So something I think is interesting is that like you emerge from a time where there were just tons and tons of like all male groups, girl groups, just singing groups, period. What do you think it was around that particular time period that uh, there was a lot of group singing? Motown. I mean, every group that that it was a, that's basically what it was at Motown uh, during you know my era, growing up years. It was. The Temptations, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, the Four Tops, and on the girl side, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, of course, the Supremes, the Honeycomb, um, the Marvelettes, 
uh, and and being being there with Motown. But then you had just your tremendous soloist, Marvin Gaye, you know, Tammy Terrell. But it was predominantly group oriented during my youth. Even with vocal groups all around them, their unique harmonies and their sound would catch the ear of producer McKinley Jackson. He happened to hear us on a gospel show. He was with Holland Doja Holland. They had just given them their own label, Music Merchant. And they, they happened to be looking for some singers to do some background work behind artists that they had at the time. And then we did so well on those sessions that they said, well, let's try them on, you know, uh, some songs themselves. So they gave us a uh, contract when we recorded a couple of songs with them. At the time of day. Their success in Detroit would lead them to LA, where they would quickly rise through the ranks, becoming one of music's most in-demand background and session singers. At that time, once we moved to California and Holland Dozier Holland used, they were using us, other people started, oh, I want that sweet sound. We want that sweet harmony. So I know you guys have worked with Aretha. Who else have you worked with? Oh my goodness. Lou Rawls, Dionne Warwick, Linda Clifford, Cher, Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, and the list goes on and on and on. No, As session singers, the Jones Girls accumulated over 400 album and single release credits. But it was with the help of Diana Ross that the Jones Girls would leave the background and take their place center stage. You know, we were Diana Ross's background singers for three years, from 76 to 79, and I owe our beginnings and our introduction to Philly International solely to the queen herself, Diana Ross. She said to us, um, so during one of my costume changes, you know I change clothes five, six times, find yourself the song and I'm gonna introduce you to the world. And in uh, Philadelphia, uh, Gamble and Huff were there in the audience and they were listening. They were listening. They said they had been listening all night. Immediately, as soon as the show was over, they came back and asked us, um, are you guys signed with anyone? And we said, no, you know, Motown's been talking to us. And within three months, you know, they uh, got with our attorneys and within three months, they uh, we were flying to Philadelphia to record the very first Jones Girls album. With hits such as Who Can I Run To, You're Gonna Make Me Love Somebody Else, and I'm At Your Mercy, the album shot to the top 10 of the charts, making the Jones girls superstars. So what do you think it was about PIR that and the Jones girls that just made it work? The message in the music. Remember, you know, my mom always said, live the lyrics. It was all about love uh, be it be it relationship love or worldly love. And I think that's the difference, the message that was in the music. What we know on this first album is these girls can clearly sing. But songs such as We're a Melody show that not only can they sing, but they have mastered harmonic singing. Harmonic singing can be separated into different types, close and open harmony. Open harmony means the distance between the top and bottom note is more than an octave. Close harmony means the notes are sung close together with less than an octave in distance between the top and the bottom note. The Jones girls are known for their tight harmony. That tightness is achieved by singing in close harmony. Looking at their harmonies drawn out, you'll see that their notes sit right on top of each other. 
Their mastery of close harmonic singing can be heard on their follow-up album, At Peace With Woman, with a song entitled, Children of the Night. So were you guys arranging the vocals on all of those songs yourself as well? Yes, absolutely. Like Children of the Night. Yes. Late at night. Are you guys together? Singing together? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's all unison. Okay. When the world is safe within their dreams. All that's unison. And then we break out into the harmony. Group singing can be done in unison and in harmony. Unison means that all members are singing the exact same note. before breaking into harmony. Children of the night. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the beauties of the Jones Girl sound, those unisons, and then we break into that harmony where we would all do our distinctive, you know, I'm always the high voice, and then there was Brenda in the middle, and Valerie had the bottom. And were you, did you guys arrange the harmonies in thirds? Yes. Okay. Yes. The Jones Girl sing in three-part harmony. This is also known as a triad. A triad consists of three notes stacked in consecutive thirds. A third is an interval, and an interval is a distance between two notes. You have a minor third, which is two notes, a whole and half step difference, and a major third, which is two notes with two whole steps difference. The lowest note in a triad is called the root. The note on top of that is one third higher than the root, and the note on top of that sits one third higher. We hear this with the Jones girls when they break out into harmony. The notes in this harmony are F, E, C. Each note is a third apart. Singing and stacking notes in thirds is not the only way to do harmony, but it is the first and most important thing that singers and musicians learn how to do. And once you have this skill mastered, then you can sing in fourths and fifths like the Jones girls do in the chorus. Children of the night, children. The notes in this harmony are B flat, D, and G. The distance between B flat and D is a third. A third above D will be F sharp, but surely sings a G, a perfect fourth higher. Children of the night, children. Moving into this next section of harmonic singing, the note structure for this is D, G, B flat. The middle and top notes are a third apart, while the D at the bottom is sung a fourth lower than the middle note. Children of the night, children. Not following conventional rules of harmonic singing will be further explored on their big hit, Nights Over Egypt. And is there like a special story behind that song? Because to this day, that still gets the dance floors crowded. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Brenda and I didn't even want to do that song. Oh. Brenda and I thought it was a bit too jazzy and coming off of uh, You're Gonna Make Me Love Somebody Else, uh, we we were like feeling like our, we really wanted to just go hardcore R and B, you know. But Valerie's like, uh, uh, we're doing this song, this song, and so we did. We listened to her, and thank God we did. Nights over Egypt has all the makings of what scientists consider to be a perfect song. At the start of the song, they use region-specific instruments to establish the feeling of being in the Sahara Desert. Over the music, the Jones girls come in with harmony to mimic the sound of wind blowing across the sand. Mm -hmm. 
During the verses, they bounce back and forth between unison and harmonic singing to tell the story of a queen and king falling in love. In the harmony on the chorus, you'll notice that someone sings a note that's not in the actual scale that they're singing. Nights over Egypt. Nights over Egypt. On songs like Nights Over Egypt, those those really intricate harmonies on there, we would do like a minor note, so it was more like four four part harmony because one of us would go in and do the fourth note. In many cases, singing a note not in the scale will result in a clash between the singers and the music. So how did they do this without disrupting the music? In music, there is something called tension and release. This idea gives the music a sense of direction. For example, if you do a scale, you build up tension to the seventh note, and that tension is released on the eighth. Nights Over Egypt is written in the key of A minor. The A minor scale has no sharps or flats. Within the key of the song is something called chords. Chords are two or more notes, but generally three harmonic notes played at the same time. Chords are important because they provide shape, space, and support to the music. During the harmonic section of this chorus, the Jones girls move between different chords. They end the first part of the chorus on a D minor chord. Most chords are built on triads, so within each chord is its own set of notes. Notes in the D minor chord have no sharps or flats, similar to the A minor chord which the song is written in. On the second passing of this chorus, the girls end in a D major chord. And you'll notice it is here that a note seems to stand out. Valerie was born with perfect pitch because of Valerie's ear. And she would say, we, we need to put this, this note right here too. And we would, one of us would, usually Valerie would go back in there and do that. Shirley sings D natural. D natural matches D natural of the written key and is in the D major chord. The note that stands out is the F sharp at the bottom. There are no sharps or flats in the key of A minor which the song is written in. This goes back to our idea of tension and release. The first time these girls do the chorus, it is done in a minor chord. Minor chords are often used in music to build tension. By singing the notes in the A minor scale, they build tension. Major chords are known for sounding full, resolved, and most importantly, complete. A way to release built tension in music is by singing a note within the chord. Notes in the D major chord are D, F sharp, and E. Valerie sings the F sharp note within the chord to release all of the tension from the phrase. Nights over Nights over and move the song and the girls into the next part of the song, which just so happens to be the important instrumental break. Nights over
The idea of harmony may seem simple to many, but sometimes the most simplest things are the most difficult things to master. If the girls aren't in harmony with each other, they still have to be in harmony with the band, and all instruments in the band have to be in harmony with each other. Because harmony is the basis of music. Harmony is why music exists. Nights Over Egypt is a musical masterpiece, and since its release, it has been remade and sampled multiple times. Despite the critical acclaim of the song and its accompanying album, it will mark the beginning of changes for the Jones Girls. Not too long after that, um, you know, you you venture out on your own. I did. Um, a lot of stuff had happened, you know, a lot of... Um, inter-family drama that goes on in every family. And we have been working together so long, you know, since eight, nine years old. And then to have that success and we were still so young. A link between many singing groups is that they all start together and share their successes very young. The reason many groups split up is because the members feel the need to develop their own sense of self and identity outside the group. And the Jones girls were no different. Really trying to figure out, find myself. I had just gone through a breakup with my guy and, and then a breakup with my sisters. And I was like, okay, what's going to happen here? So I started doing background with people like Howard Hewitt, uh, Phyllis Hyman, one night um, when I came home from the studio, uh, I was just sitting there. I'm like, God, I want to sing. I want, you know, I really want to get back out there in the forefront, you know. And Kenny Gamble happened to call me and asked me, so what you doing? I said, well, I'm doing background work, hanging out, you know, had gotten a regular job. And he said, would you be interested in doing a, doing a solo project? I'm like, man, yes. Do you get enough And uh, I had the, my first number one record, Do You Get Enough Love, in 1986 as a soloist. In the early 90s, the Jones Girls would reunite for one last album and tour. Since the release of Always in the Mood and the final Jones Girls album, Shirley has continued to successfully release solo material. She credits her success as a solo artist to her time in the group. How did you navigate like this to what Shirley Jones likes, but also you guys know me as Shirley Jones of the Jones Girls? Well, I purposely uh, always kept a lot of harm, uh, really nice background parts. Uh, and I got that from creating background on the Jones Girl stuff with my sisters. Why is background vocals, why are they so important? What do they add to music? They add, they're the song. I mean, they really, you know, most people, you can, you can remember the lyrics if you're the person that, that's singing it. But, but most people, when you're listening to a song, that background's got to be slick. You know, um, and everybody sings the background, you know, because most people don't consider themselves uh, lead singers. Think of your favorite song. What part comes to mind first? The chorus, right? And who sings the chorus? The background singers. Background vocals are a reason why her latest single, Soul Seppin, is quickly climbing up the charts. Now it's time for some soul step, step to the left, you better step to the right. You're back on top of the charts again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With Soul Steppin. And yeah, can you just I... tell us about where is Shirley Jones heading? 
musically, I'm trying to bridge that, that, you know, that like a lot of times they, they say old school or they, you know, I'm an old school artist. Yes, I am. But I try to, in my music, like Soul Stephan, I'm trying to incorporate a beautiful sound with some really nice hip beats that, that you young generation like. Today, in addition to furthering her own career, Shirley has remained committed to keeping the Jones girls' legacy alive. For my sisters um, have transitioned, my whole purpose of staying out there and in everything I do, even the album that I'm working on, the In Loving Memory album, my whole purpose now is to remind people I'm out there performing all the time, singing Jones girls' and Shirley Jones stuff to remind people of those beautiful harmonies. The music of the Jones girls has made its way through generations of R&B and into the world of gospel and today into the EDM and dance clubs worldwide. Masters of their craft, their place as one of music's greatest acts will always be solidified. And together, we are the Jones Girls. Is there anything you want to say to the viewers before we go? Yes, just hit me up, you know, on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram, Shirley Jones of the Jones Girls, Twitter, Jones Girl Shirley. My website is ShirleyJonesGirl.com. And I'd love to hear from people. And just remember, it's all about love with me. I'm just spreading love and joy to people and just smile, give people love. We've gone through these past couple of years with the pandemic and everything. There's been so much and so much hate that we all got to just love on each other. I always say, do you get enough, get enough, get enough, get enough love? I want to know. So spread love. That's what it's all about. <laughs>